What's happening, Fish and Friends? Welcome to another episode. Today is all about that guy right there, a little finesse spinnerbait, something that can be absolutely deadly this time of year, early fall. It didn't make my top fall baits, and it kind of made me sad, so I tied one of these on, threw it, and it, it happened to be a great day catching fish. Now, this is actually the video after, or the same day, uh, the video that I just did, the popper video, this was after that, after the popper bite died. So we're kind of picking up where the popper bite died. Uh, go out and fish the spinnerbait. I'll leave the popper video at the end. Go check that out after this. But enough yapping, catching some on a little finesse spinnerbait. Got him out of there, there we go. Tied on the spinnerbait, second cast with that. I thought with the wind, sun's come up. Oh, hey, better fish. Best fish of the day, I think. As long as he doesn't come off, oh, maybe not. He looked better. Second cast with that, spinnerbait. Sun had come up, I hadn't had a bite on a popper for probably 40 minutes. There we go, throwing the war eagle. You know why? You know why? Because I took a selfie, posted it on Instagram. Look at that. I saw the war eagle hat and I'm like, you know what? Got a little bit of wind. Kind of stained water. I should probably throw a little spinner bait. So thanks for hat, or uh, thanks to the hat for reminding me here. If you find wood, if you got some stain, little chop on the water, throw a spinner bait. They seem to be eating up, starting anyway. So. There was that toilet bowl right behind it. Slurp. I was like, did I just catch weeds? No. I caught a fish. He's a toad. That's right, he's a spinnerbait eater. We like those. We like the fish that actively seek out and eat the spinnerbait. Northern. This is, I don't know what color this one is. To me, it looks like a crappie. That's why I like this one. It's kind of translucent. It's got some chartreuse. It's got some of those like barred lines on it. I really like that color. I call it the turtle back blade. I don't know. Somebody else will correct me on it. I don't know what the real name is, but I like these. Good little compact looking deal. You don't need to put a skirt on it or uh, don't need to put a trailer on it because that skirt back there is a little bit longer. Kind of kicks like a, a little plastic, which I like. Another one on the crank or uh, spinner. I was just thinking in my head, man, I bet with all this rock, I bet a crank would be really good. And I cranked yesterday, so I didn't even throw the crank rod in. Like a dummy. Oh well, that's another one on the spinner bait. Maybe we can just get a whole bunch of spinner beaters. Just, nope, just dogging me. I couldn't tell for sure. There we go. What a fun day. Weather's gorgeous. Got a little ripple on the water. Thanks to the hat for reminding me. I just grabbed a random hat this morning. Saw it in the picture. Yeah, yeah, good call. <laughs> On the rocks, man, they're just like Six foot off the rock seems like most of these are coming from. That's what I mean, man, a crankbait. I bet a crankbait would absolutely be crushing it out here today. But they're eating a spinnerbait, so I'm gonna keep throwing that. Because I like catching them on a spinnerbait. One of my earliest confidence lures ever is because you just cast it and reel it, cast it and reel it. Didn't know what I was doing half the time with some of these lures when I was young, so I still don't know what I'm doing. Maybe that's what we need to do is focus on Finding more of these rocky points and stuff. Anywhere three to six feet out seems like where they've kind of been. Must be just kind of sitting on the drop off waiting for stuff to zip by. Oh. <laughs> on the speed up. I set the hook and I was hoping it was gonna be a toad. It's a fish. He's just not a big fish. There we go. One more, just off the rock, six feet out. 
seems to be the old yep right on the log right on the log right on the log i should probably anchor here since we got so much wood and stuff okay let's land this feller one more thanks for eating sir okay so wood and rock with the spinner okay let's see right between the uprights here do we have one sitting right between the uprights of the wood that dude was right on the edge of that big old log over there there's one under the wood under the wood. Oh, he came right into your living room. By the rocks and wood. Mix the two that have been working with you, and you find another spinnerbait fish. Gosh, the spinnerbait, I mean, really, it's just a a lure that you can cover a bunch of water with? Hey, that's a better one. Oh, that might be one of the chunkiest of the day. One of those lures you can just cover a bunch of water around rock, those points, around wood, docks, all these different things. Look at him. Eating up. Pound and a quarter, close to a pound and a half. Those are fun, man. I don't care what you say. Throwing around the spinner like this. That's a dang fun day in my book. Rocky Point. Oh, my old spinner bait bite. Hey, he's ferocious. Little feller. Little feller. One more for the day on a spinner bait. I do love it. I do love a spinnerbait bite. Mm-hmm. That's the toilet bowl. See how it kicks slack into it? My line went, whoa, what? Come up from behind it and hit it and just kept going. Is he gonna jump? No, don't jump. There we go, back down. I love that, dude, when they just come up behind it. Boom. There we go. Another little bit better fish. Nope, never mind. Thought he was. Ha! Ah, gotcha. Just kidding. Another Debo Dink. We still love you, sir. You are a friend of the channel. You're welcome. It's fish. We're catching fish. It is a lot of fun. Now, see, this is interesting. I'm coming with the wind by this point. I threw by it when I was going around. And that's another thing, too, with these points and wood and stuff. Don't be afraid, you know, if you're in a yak or boat, sometimes it's hard from the bank, but hit it from a different direction, you know, if you're fishing right on top of it, casting straight. Don't be afraid to get around to the backside of it or cast across it. Mix it up a little bit. There we go. I was wondering, I'm like, how on all of this rocky bank line with some shade have we not found one? Oh, we found one. Oh, we found the fish. Yeah, old spinner bait, gold blade, silver blade, no chartreuse, kind of bluegilly, crappy looking. These fish seem to dig it. I dig it. All right, fisher friends, that was the video. And again, this is the little spinner bait, a little finesse. War Eagle, uh, it's got the little turtle back blade there. I forget what it's actually called, Ohio blade or something like that. Little Colorado there, and just a little small profile. I like these finesse ones because they have the skirt back here that kind of acts like your trailer. I talked about that in the video. So you've got kind of this main piece here with a little tail back here, and you can see that whole profile there is just about three inches is all. So a good, small, compact size, smaller blades. It's the air, air compressor. 
And I especially like this color, this spot remover, because it's a pretty natural, uh, kind of translucent color, but it's got some white, some char chartreuse, and I like the bottom of it there because it's kind of got this speckled, kind of reminds me of like a crappie or a white bass, this kind of uh, speckled skirting into it. So just a very natural looking kind of little translucent -y bait fish. Now the combo, I'm gonna go over the combo in a second. The reason I kept this separate is because with the spinnerbait this time of year, I'm really looking for those spots where I think fish are gonna be kind of congregating. And on this lake, it was around little wood piles, little pieces of brush, and those points, those rocky points. And I can't stress enough to hit those points from different angles. Probably the biggest tip of this video because I caught some casting parallel to the rocks, but most of the time when I was out on those points, I would try to hit it from different areas. And if I just hit it from the front and moved on, I wouldn't have caught some of those fish. So hitting it at different angles, if you're not doing that, whether it's a piece of brush, um, you know, like a little island thing, like some of these rocky points, you're missing out because, you know, just going one way at something can really change, you know, the look of it as you get to the side of it or to the back of it. So uh, don't be afraid to do that. Switch up uh, kind of the ways and directions you're casting. The combo here, so this is the chatterbait rod, the, uh, as it shows there, the Cashin Icon specifications on it there it's a 7-1 medium heavy moderate fast and i talk about that for my reaction baits because of the exact reason that you saw in this video so many of those fish especially on a chatter bait and i was feeling it on the spinner bait so many of them come up actually that's what i've got tied on this is a little uh finesse stealth blade chatter bait if you haven't tried these you're missing out the little clear blade real finesse but anyway with the chatter bait they say like nine times out of ten they're coming up behind the chatterbait and eating it. And you can feel that on the spinnerbait when I was saying it feels like a toilet bowl because it feels like something just kind of flushes behind it and you kind of feel this and then there's no more vibration. You're like, oh wait. And if you get a really big fish where it really engulfs all of it, it's like, oh yeah, this is a good one. Didn't catch any toads uh, on this trip, but I did get that feeling, you know, where they were just coming up and slurping it. And that's why I like the a more of a moderate fast. Medium heavy um, is usually my go-to, seven-ish foot. This is a seven-one. That moderate fast, so when that rod bends or when they eat that bait, the rod starts to bend and load up. And if you go back and watch some of the footage and slow it down, you're able to see where that rod will kind of load up before I pull into it. So it really means that fish has it. If it was an extra fast or, you know, if I was especially using braid on some of these moving baits, you kind of feel that tick tick first and you can pull it out of their mouth. Now, are they going to come back and eat it before you even know some of the times? Yeah. But for me, I would just rather have a softer rod where they can really get a good hold of that first before I'm even feeling it uh, and pulling into them. So that's why I like more of a, a moderate fast rod, just a little bit softer tip. But once you get down into the bend of the backbone, it's got a good solid backbone to actually penetrate that hook into the mouth. Uh, 15 pound fluorocarbon, P-Line Tactical, kind of my all around go-to for uh, for most moving baits. And I can either go up or down from there. And then the reel, this is the Luz. Let's see, you can see that there. The Luz Tournament Light, heck of a caster. I should probably do some uh, some more reviews. I've got a number of rods and reels I wanna talk about. I need to get my butt in gear, but this is one I've had, I don't know, since last year, sometime it came out, I think, maybe even the year before, but Luz has started going to kind of some of the new body styles. They've got some of the different technology coming out. I really like to get my hands on the all black, like the Luz Custom, whatever the new one is coming out. Some of the new brakes, this still has the old, if I pop that side plate off the ACB brakes, so you can see there those little pads, those are little centrifugal brakes that as you cast, push out and rub on this little brass race. And they've had a few different iterations of these. They had some that were uh, pretty noisy before that kind of fixed that issue. And these, uh, the newer ones have not been noisy at all. They cast well, you could see even into the wind uh, with a little three eighths ounce spinner bait. So, that's the setup. Comment below and let me know, have you thrown a spinnerbait this year? I feel like it's still one of those lures that goes up and down, you know, with the chatterbait, everybody kind of goes to that. Honestly, for me, it's kind of gone down, not to the chatterbait, but to like I said, do I have any? Yeah, a little finesse underspin. That's kind of taken over my spinnerbait. Um, you know, I don't know if it's pressure. I don't know if it's days where I just don't have enough wind or kind of dirtier water. Some of the spots I've fished are, you know, really high in vegetation. They tend to get a little bit clearer. So maybe that's been the deal versus, you know, in the old day, I was used to fishing stained and pretty muddy, dirty water where you've only got, you know, a foot or so of visibility. So I need to go back to that. Uh, still a great bait. I love the spinner bait. Like I said in the video, one of my first confidence lures ever. So comment below and let me know what y'all think. Uh, if you've not tried the War Eagles, give them a try. They've been around a long time. They're a great spinner. Now, today's subscribe fishing friend. Oh, it's going to be Mr. Chad Swank. He just recently won a giveaway on the live. He's a fellow Iowa boy, so I will be getting a package out to him. Appreciate everybody that continues to watch the videos, the lives. I appreciate the heck out of y'all, but... 
Got to finish editing. Love you. Thanks. Oh, free rig. Uh, there was also free rig catches this day, but I'm going to do a different free rig video kind of showing the rigging and all that because it's still very new to me. You know, the technique's been around for quite some time, but I want to go through all that. I'll throw some catches in uh, and maybe give uh, you the gumption to give it a try because it's a sweet little rig. So anyway, now I'm out of here. Love you all. Bye.